good evening to everybody to the students of the international human rights law and uh, today that i am going to read the globalization impact on the human rights now read what i posted on the screen unmute and read donati malibwa uh, yes read the United Methodist Church. <laughs> Good evening to the students of the IHRL, International Human Rights Law. Logo, Cross and Flame, and the United Methodist Church, it is playing a vital role in the global Asia in many aspects. It is like a other agency like the amnesty if i not be mistaken and professor muhammad sahib hussein so now here when you want to say the globalization versus human rights can you read this one yes yes global globalization versus human rights go ahead in an age of globalization, the struggle for human rights has become more complex and challenging. Realizing human rights, especially economic and social rights, is becoming increasingly difficult. One of the most profound challenges that we face as a community of nations is to understand better the emerging social economic forces and the forms of globalization to shape them to save our needs and to respond effectively to their uh, deleterious yes. consequences. Human rights can balance forces of globalization within a just international legal framework. Maintaining balance between globalization and the protection of human rights should be a priority. Human rights are what make us human. They are the principles by which we create the sacred home for human dignity. Human rights are what reason requires and conscious commands. Yes. So in the age of the globalization, because this is the age of the globalization, the struggle for the human rights has become a more complex and challenging. Why it has become more complex and challenging, could you tell me? Yes. Why it has become a more challenging and complex? We we dealt it in my because last class. Of... Please go ahead. I think it's because of the emerging issues that didn't exist previously. Globalization makes the migration of the people from one country to another country, either for the investment or for the trip or for the living. And hence, it became a challenging issue because people will migrate, their culture is different, their way of behavior is different, the way of life is different, and the country where they move is, the culture is different. And hence, there is a more complexity would be there for the production of the human rights. Realizing the human rights consciousness, there will be economic and social rights becoming increasingly difficulty. Because of the investment, economic development will be there and the rights of the person from one country to another country also changes over there and that the social rights, it is becoming increasingly difficult. One of the most profound challenges that we face as a community of nations is to understand better the emerging socio-economic forces. That is a very important fact. Socio-economic forces and forms of globalization. To shape them to serve our needs 
and to respond effectively to, the, to their deleterious consequences. The consequences varies because of the globalization. Human rights can balance forces of the globalization within a just international legal framework because the human rights in the within the legal framework they would like to make the production to the people maintaining a balance between the globalization and production of the human rights should be priority human rights how it will be priority because people are of different nations moving and migrating and living in the different places of the globalization, including the investment, economic development, they are creating to the place where they are invested. And thus, there would be a lot of cultural differences would be there, socio-economic growth would be there. And when people are more, there would be the possibility that human rights violations should be there. The reason is the corporate culture and the people are rich over there, and the rich would like to dominate on the poor in mostly the sexual abuse and uh, child abuse and many other factors will take place. So that is the reason human rights are what make us human. Actually, these human rights makes, make us human and because of this thing, human dignity will be increased. They are the principle by which we create the sacred home for the dignity because of the human rights. They are the principles by which we create the sacred home for the human dignity. Human rights are what reason requires and consents commands. So there would be a reason for the requires to be a human and that is the inherent one and our consents commands for that one. So that is the made by the Professor Dr. Muhammad Sabsen, compiled Professor of Law, School of Law, St. Augustine University of Tanzania, Monza, Tanzania, East Africa. Now let us see the another, uh, here Article 26, Article 25, Article 16, Article 8, Article 6, Article 14, Article 5, Article 2 of the Human Rights Declarations that made it very much clear. What the Article 26 says? The right to an education. Article 25, right to healthy living conditions. When the people move from one country to another country for their living or for the reading, right to education even they do also having over there. Of course, they will pay the fee and they will get educated. So they do have the right. The right cannot be alienated. The right to healthy living conditions Yes, where a person will be living would be there. It is the responsibility of the state to see that a healthy living condition should be prevailed over there. And Article 16, right to marry with free and full consent. Yes, a person can marry even though he is a foreign national. Yes, he can marry by following certain norms of the country and the place where they are going to marry. Because... When you marry it, they will see the capacity of it and the age of it and other factors also. Article 8, the right to be free from the arbitrary arrest and detention. Yes, this will be available wherever a person will go. They should not be arrested without a reasonable cause. And the Article 6, the right to recognize as a person before the law. Yes. The right to recognition as a person before the law. We should treat a human being as a human being, even though he is a caste, creed, sex, color, and the skin might be the very, and their culture may be the very. Article 14, the right to seek asylum from prosecution. Yes, because this is the people, those who comes to our country, naturally the country will give the asylum to them. And... Uh, is it not the violation of the certain norms? Suppose if the country is having the extradition treaty, do you know what is meant by extradition treaty? Anyone? Do you know what is meant by extradition, extradition treaty? If you know it, you tell me. If you don't know it, you just you say pass on. Participants, 
Do not be my liver. I could not see your hand. Microphone. Christina Masanja, unmute and say, give the answer. Sakina Paul, extradition treaty. Say, Pasan. I could not hear you. Donati Malibwa. Anyone can say, Pasan. I will give the answer. So that I could know that you are with me and I am with you. <laughs> that is my intention. <laughs> Whether you are hearing me or not, I would like to know it. Now the Shakila Paul microphone also disappeared. Donati Malibu microphone also disappeared from the screen. And only Christian Masanja red microphone, it means mute is there. Extradition treaty means if any criminal offense is done by a person and if he if he escape from the country to another country for the asylum if the treaty is there between the two countries the other country who gave the asylum should have to return back to him to the country where he committed a offense that is the extradition treaty extradition e x t r a d i t i o n and the next is Article 2, the right to freedom from discrimination. No caste, no creed, no, no rich, no poor, no color, no culture. And uh, they should not be discriminated over there. Because when the globalization comes, all these things should be put in the mind. And uh, otherwise there is an impact on the human rights because of the globalization. So now let us see that... Uh, how the globalization impact will be there. There are group of human rights in the form of economic rights, labor rights, cultural rights, civil and political rights, etc. So now we have to have seen is different, different rights. We have seen it. Some of them economic rights, labor rights, cultural rights, civil rights and political rights, etc. The globalization is considered to have an impact on the following rights. Now let us see, it is having the impact even the economic rights, labor rights, cultural rights, civil and political rights. The admission to the WTO of nations. What is WTO? Anyone? Unmute and give me the answer. What is WTO? What is the full form of it? World Trade Organization. In the four kinds of the abbreviation, which type of the abbreviation it is? Initialism. I appreciate, I appreciate. <laughs> yes, it's the initialism of a nation that violates human rights, extinguishes the opportunity for the valuable sanction to disgrace such a violations. So now, if any violations would be there in employment, not employment, employment ILO will come over there. In the trade, in the business, the WTO will take care of it to see that they will make a valuable sanction to disgrace such a violation because World Trade Organization would be there. Open trade causes the production to relocate to areas where environmental standards and R lacks and lacks and results in environmental degradation. I don't think this is a lax. It is a lax, I believe. L A C. Let us see whether the lax is there any term. Because as my knowledge goes, let us see whether the term lax is there. Lax. Hmm. Lax X means. Yeah, it is there. So, lax in the sense, yeah, it is a, a C definition, not sufficiently strict, severe or careful. Not sufficiently strict, severe or careful. So, here we can take any not sufficient strict, that meaning we can take it at. So, not sufficiently strict, lax. Standards are lax, not sufficiently fixed and results in the environmental degradation. 
So when trade and industries are there, when the industries are established or installed, at the time it will emanate number one smoke, number two if the industry is there, what are the emanates? What are the bring out? Number one, smoke. Number two, anyone? Number two, industries. How do they have the impact on the environment? Yes. I told you one fumes. Moshi or Moshi? Moshi. Air pollution. Another pollutant is effluence. E double F L U N T S. Effluence means that liquid comes out of from the industry. That is called effluence, which is a toxic in nature, having the many minerals, very toxic things in it. So the effluence should be neutralized, then it will be passed on to the streams. Otherwise, it will kill the flora, it will kill the aqua animals, aquaculture. So open trade causes the production to liquid areas where the environmental standards are lax not strictly followed and result in environmental degradation likewise the competitive pressure the result from the open trade cause regulated to lose control over the local regulatory matters and participate in a race to the bottom over your matters such as the social welfare standards environmental standards and worker production legislations. When there is a competition to be there, naturally it will have the economic impact also. People wants to sell their goods at the lower prices. So a fair competition act is there. So one should not go beyond that price below. That is a fair competition. It will make a standard of it. With that economic standards will not be lowered down and uh, social welfare standards then how the welfare welfare legislations are there we cannot take the work extract the work from the industry how much the work period for the industry tenure i mean not tenure the duty work it is six hours seven hours eight hours ten hours or twelve hours anyone What are the duty hours in the industry? Please unmute and give me the answer. Generally, it is not more than eight hours. Because some people time work on with the brain touching, brain torture, it's only six hours. What about the South employees working hours? Yes. Sometimes the class is 7.45 and sometimes the class is uh, evening 5.45 to 8 o'clock. So morning 7.45 yeah. to evening, evening, is it 7.45? Of course, there would not be a continuous work would be there, but uh, the timings are different. Are you following me? Say yes at least. So that I could know that you are with me. Participants, Ume, Ume, Ume Lala, are you sleeping? <laughs> sir, there is no interest. <laughs> no. But why you are not giving response? Sir, we did not catch you. <laughs> Still, you did not catch my accent. <laughs> Okay, welfare legislations, yes, uh, there would be a weekly half would be there or that duty hour should not be. When you work over there, naturally depending upon the work, the apron would be given or a dress will be given, a shoes will be given. So environmental standards again they have to see it. Environment, air pollution, water pollution and such a thing is there even, even a 
even a vibration, noise pollution and the worker protection legislations. So how the worker would be protected over there, that would be taken care of by the WTO, including the protection legislation will come in the ILO also. So open trade exacerbates inequality in the distribution of the income. Similarly, the negative impact of no globalization. So open trade, it will ex exacerbates. What, what did you know by exacerbates? It produces or causes or emanates. Let us see the exact meaning because we will understand by, the, by reading it what it actually it says. But if we want the exact how many meanings are there, we can see it exacerbates. Here pronunciation is exacerbate. 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 That is the pronunciation. <laughs> For our understanding, we can say exacerbate. Okay. So it means make a problem bad situation or negative feeling or worse. So making from the better to from the good to bad. So making a problem bad situation or a negative feeling worse. The, ex the exorbitant cost of the land in urban areas by exacerbated the problem. So it is aggravated the problem. So making the worse. So that is called exacerbate. So here open trade making the problem more worse because of the inequality in the distribution of income. See, income sources are there. Suppose the, um, it, the demand is more and the labor is less. At the time, the labor charges are more. Are you following me? Yes. Suppose the labor is more and the work is less, the labor charges will be reduced. So that is the demand supply basis. Distribution of income will be there it will vary. Now you tell me in Tanzania, suppose a casual labor is there. At that instance, how much a, a man will be get per day or how much a woman can get per day? Income, I am speaking. Casual labor, I am speaking. Means daily wage. They work and take the money in the evening. Whether there is a discrepancy or the difference would be there in the man and woman income? Mishara. I am speaking about the daily wage. Please speak. If they are both if they are both doing the same job, they will get equally. But if they are do, if they are doing different jobs, they will be paid differently. Of course, both are carrying the sand from one place to another place. But in India, yeah, so, yeah, but in India, yeah. at least some difference is there. At least 100 Tanyana shillings or 1000 Tanyana shillings, a difference would be there because man will work more and that's why the, his salary, his, his uh, honorarium, not honorarium, it is a daily wage is more when you compare with the woman. Because women cannot carry that much sand, but man will carry that sand. But what the woman will do, she will fill the sand into the sacks and the sacks will be carried by the man. So a, a less burdensome job would be given for the woman just to fill the sack, fill the sack with the sand. Bag, sack means bag. And the bag will be carried over the, over the bag, bag by the man. So uh, his uh, remuneration or the daily wage is a bit more than the woman. So here the open trade magnets, it making the worst inequality in the distribution of the income. Similarly, the negative impact of the globalization. It is a negative impact on the globalization. Next is, especially on the vulnerable section of the community results in the violation of the various rights guaranteed by the various covenants in the particular particular on on them. So here who is the vulnerable section of the society community who are marginalized are below the poverty line 
are the women are domestic servants child so these are results violation of the various rights guaranteed by the various covenants in the particular on them particular on them it is so the women cannot be exploited a child cannot be exploited for the sexual abuse even a woman cannot be exploited for the sex or bonded labor next is the enjoyment of the fundamental aspects of the right to life so when you enjoy the right to life when you are economically sound and a freedom from the cruel or inhuman or degrading treatment so if you if your housemaid is there we should not treat her in a cruel manner or inhuman way we should treat like a woman being because because of the poverty she is a housemaid in your house you are a rich man that's why you kept the housemaid to do the job like a sweeping washing ironing or getting the provisions or taking care of the children or dropping the children to the school from there taking care of them to bring it to home such all activities will be done at the time we should not treat them as inhuman or degrading treatment to them the next point is freedom from servitude so the right to equality and non discrimination that is another one do you know what is meant by servitude yes it is a covenant it is a condition what do you say servitudes because in the easement there is also servitudes are there easement so let us see the what exactly the servitude is so that you could also know and we will not be beating around the bush here servitude the pronunciation of the is servitude the state of being a slave or a completely subject to someone more powerful it is nothing but a slavery the state of being slave or completely subject to someone more powerful you have got thousands of years of peasant servitude to make it up for so that is the meaning for the servitude it is a slavery nothing but so freedom from the slavery the right to equality of course slavery is not no more there now uh, because of uh, because of the people's rights and the uno uh, uno uno made such a thing passed such a uh, charters and uh, nobody will treating now as a slave nor nor the women or the men will be sold in the market the right to equality the equal treatment should be given to them and the non discrimination they should not discriminate it and he is a he is a slave and he is not supposed to sit on the chair okay let him sit at least on the kigoda are you following me say yes 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 can you read the next provision this one anyone can unmute and read which i highlighted the light is the light to an adequate standard of living including right to adequate food clothing and housing repeat the light to not an adequate light. standard of living it is not light right. light right yes that is the way <laughs> i don't know many people will pronounce uh, r as e l uh, lomalla lomalla i say what is lomalla it is not lomalla romanla okay the right to an adequate standard of living within parenthesis including the right to adequate food clothing and housing and these are the basic rights of a human being and today i edited one article where a very good point is given right to house do you have the right to house in constitution right to housing the right of housing dwelling dwelling adequate dwelling should be given by the government they said yes there is a right is there so here basic rights are there the yes. shelter house clothing and food these are the basic needs 
So now next is right to maintain a high standard of physical and mental health. So how do we maintain it? By, by opening the multi-special hospital, multi-special speciality hospital. How many hospitals are there in Tanzania? The good hospitals. Run by the government or run by the private? Anyone? Sir, we don't know in Tanzania, but we know in Mwanza. Okay, tell me in Mwanza. Sir, Bugando Hospital is there. That is a private hospital. It's not a government hospital. Next. Next. Nobody is giving the answer. We have the regional hospital. Where? Sakature Regional Hospital. Is it run by the government? Yes, it is run by the government. It's a regional referral hospital. Do you have multi special specialty in that hospital? Like cardiologist, ophthalmologist, oncologist, orthopedic surgeon, gynecologist. These are all the specialty. Yes, the government. Some of them are there. Okay. Do you know what is a referral hospital? Referral hospital. Yes, it is a, a referral hospital also. That's a criteria. It's a referral hospital. Okay, because only there is a specialist would be there. A thing, a small hospital where you could not good do the treatment, then we'll refer to the referral hospital. And uh, in, in, yes. in Dar es Salaam, it's a Regency hospital is there. Of course, IMTU also runs the hospital and the government hospital is Mahambuli is there. And in addition to that, uh, there is a specialty hospital, Aga Khan hospital is there. Did you see the Aga Khan hospital? Aga Khan, yes. In Dar es Salaam. Sir, we born in uh, Mwanza and we never crossed Mwanza border. <laughs> Please, <laughs> I gave the Bill Clinton the statement, if you born in the poor family, it is not your mistake, but you die as a poor man, it is a mistake. I want that my students should not be poor, they should die. They should do something which is a miracle, which is, if you have determination, I am sure, sky is the limit. But proportionate yes. work you have to do. Proportionate work you have to do. Even myself also, my father is an ordinary a employee in the, in the company. It is like a supervisor, a small income, having the 10 children. Of course, two of them died. We are eight. Among them, I am only the person and who studied. Other, my brothers will not study. But my father told, how much you want to study, you can study. I will bear the expenses. Of course, the government gives the stipends to us. So we, we ate bure because of the government, because my father income is less and hence bure. But I have one desire in my life. Whenever I see the indege, what is indege? Kiswahili. What is meant by indege? And there is, it's ambiguous, indege by a plane or indege bed. No, it's here plane. So whenever the plane goes in the sky, I used to think one day I want to board into the plane, not with the, my money, but with the money of the other country government. That was my desire. So I did my PhD and I applied the various places. Now why I am giving this thing is, I want to make motivate you. That's my intention. I did my PhD in the law. Then the first and I applied Maiduguri University in the Nigeria, federal university it is. There I got the employment. But somebody told me that no, 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 better not to go over there. What you are doing job now as the principal of one of the colleges is good. But later on, the University of Asmara advertised it. Eritrea, I applied, I got the position as an assistant professor too. 
without my money, with the government money, the University of Tanzania, University of the Asmara, Eritrea money, I boarded the plane because they sent that air ticket to me and a visa also. So I boarded the plane without spending my money. And I made my children also to fly without the money. But my children could not come over there. My wife came. Okay, why I am giving this, uh, this uh, my short story of mine is, man should have certain target. Sir, target or target? No, it is a target. <laughs> so, a aim would be there in the life. So, you should follow that aim. I am sure sky is the limit to you and you can make it out. So, don't make a desire of only a, living a life like a Chura, Prague in your well. Okay? Say yes. It. Yes. I appreciate. I appreciate. So, the right to maintain a high standard of physical and mental health. So, if physical and mental health comes at that instance only, you could do some physical exercise that is very much necessary. Otherwise, the mental health is not good. If you are physically good, and mentally you can do the work. If you are physically very weak, you cannot do the work. You cannot stand. You cannot give, deliver the a lecture like a Simba. I'm not. See you like a Paka. Are you following me? Say yes. Yes. Next. The right yes. to work accompanied by the right to just and fair conditions of labor. I don't know whether you know or not. Here... Mining is there, is it not? Geta, Geta or Geta? Gold mine. Geta. Uh, where is the mica mine? Mica, mica. Do you have the mica mine here? I believe there is a mica mine. So, this mining is there. There are three types of the minings are there. I don't know whether you know it or not. Number one, open cast means they just they dig it you can see the sky you can see the sky another is incline incline means steep it's a 45 degree angle you have to walk inside there you can go for uh, mining especially because i am from the coal mine area in our place there is a coal mine is there so i i know the three types of the one is incline means we have to walk 45 degrees. Another is a shaft, S-H-A-F-T, shaft. That means directly we can go as a lift inside the earth to at least one mile or half mile. There the coal or any, any other minerals are there. So when you, when you work under the underground, you will be given a, a hard cover what I say, kofia. Kofia means it is a cap and uh, you are having a shoe which is having at the toes metal and you will be given the light also to go inside because there is no light inside so a light will be also given over there. Why I am giving this thing is you have to make adequate facility for the working conditions. So that is what I want to say. So it's where we are, a right to maintain a high standard of physical and mental health, we read it, right to work accompanied with the right to just and fair conditions. The fair conditions are there. Somewhere you will not get the oxygen in the undermining. At that time, they will, they will run from upstairs, from the earth, the fans to supply the air to inside for the breathing. So, such a condition should be there. If a person is working at the furnace, Molten, molting furnace, iron molting furnace, they will give in a separate, uh, separate apron to free from the, the heat, which will not uh, have the impact on them. If the heat impact would be there, at that instance, there would be a very high consequences even they cannot procreate the children. The sperms, the sperms will die because of the heat and the, it cannot generate it also. So, the right to work accompanied by the right to just and fair conditions of labor, the conditions of the 
fair condition should be there like uh, labor charges eight hours or the six hours depending upon the type of the work they have done so these are the things where we can make it out having the impact of the globalization because people will migrate from one place to another place for the employment for the investment for the living conditions or for the marriage for the recreation for the education many other factors are there here freedom of, of association and assembly and the right to collective bargaining have been severely impaired so freedom of association is there the people migrate over there even they don't know the law of the land even the land people the subject they will not they will dominate over them so a freedom of association will be a bit curbed and assembly and the right to collective bargaining means the bargaining method no if you give this much you would like to work so the collective bargaining bargaining with the trade union and have been severely impaired over there because of the globalization having a more impact over and next is developing a state are more often than not compelled by the dynamic of globalization to make measures and negatively impact on the enjoyment of those rights. So whenever the change is there, it is having the positive impact, it is having the negative impact. Both are there. But when you compare it, because of the globalization, the advantages are more, what I want to say. Because, because of the globalization, the country economic GDP will be grown because many people will invest here and make the employment to the local people and they will export it and they will get the foreign currency. So better you have the good relations with the neighboring country and having the trade relations, export and import relations, then the country will be developed. If not, you are solitarily a country will die if they don't have any relations with the other country. That's why Tanzania as well as India, they are the treaty, they are the many members for the treaty, charters, protocols, declarations, multilational, multi multilational treaties, bilateral treaties, they will be part of it. So because of it only there will be a security would be there and a healthy environment would be there and no threat to the human life. So now you read this one, this paragraph. Anyone can unmute and read this which I am highlighting it. Cursor I put it. Globalization from here. Anyone can unmute uh, and read. Globalization. Proceed. Globalization. Globalization has not caused developing countries to catch up with the developed world. Uh, inequality has risen during this present globalization period. The developed world, their intellectuals and the policymakers view globalization as providing good opportunities for their countries and their people. Globalization can be preserved from two angles. One angle is that globalization is a means of increasing the wealth of nations and promoting international trade. Yes. See, globalization has caused developing countries. Naturally, a person who is wise enough know he would like to dominate the person who is not that much wise. Wise, W-I-S-E, wise. Not wise, V-I-C-E, wise. So developing countries to catch up with the developed world. So globalization has not caused developing countries to catch up with the developed world. Because naturally the person who is well developed will try to dominate the other people. And he never allow the another people, developing countries to develop like them. But people will try to be genius enough. They try to catch it if they don't even give such a chance also. They will grab such a chance and to see that the country will be developed. So inequality has arisen during this present globalization period because a poor man becomes more poor and a rich man becomes more rich. Do you think that Tanzania is a poor country? Yes. Do you think that Tanzania is a poor country? Say. Say. 
What is your opinion? Uh, my opinion, uh, Tanzania is by itself is not poor. You it has a lot of uh, resources. Also, like you. Tanzania is a not poor country. Yeah. But only the thing is you now, the machinery which is controlling over there, it will be making the many loopholes and where the people swallow the money of the taxes or any other things. Otherwise, Tanzania is having natural resources and Tanzania is having export very, see, the Nile perch and the export the Lake Victoria, <coughs> excuse me, the 14 currency, country currency will be, you can get it over here. Tourism is very more and the natural parks are there and natural sceneries are there. Kilimanjaro is there. Many foreign countries so will come to the Tanzania. Some Sophia is speaking. I don't know who is Sophia. Because I could see the Sophia also present here. Yes, meeting will be in by the five minutes. Sophia, yes, somebody is joined over there. Oh. Sophia Ambrose Silayo, she doesn't know how to mute and, uh, yes, but now she muted it. Okay. Now let us come to the point again. So, the developed world, their intellectuals and the policy makers and view globalization as a prone, a good opportunity for their countries and their people. They will try to see that they will grab the opportunity and um, want to make them rich at the cost of the other country, which is a developed. So, prone, a good opportunity for their countries and their people and globalization can be preserved preserved from the two angles. So now, whenever any other country would want to invest in this country, naturally there is a terms and conditions are there. What would be the benefit would be there for the country which giving is such a subsidy to the other country for investment in this country. So naturally they will say, if the skilled persons are there, okay, they can get from their own country. But the skilled person should have to train the local persons, as a skilled persons, later they could go, go away. When they are moving, they are not supposed to take away their machinery. They have to keep the machinery over here only. So there are certain conditions are there. By that one, they cannot exploit, even though they are wise. Because terms and conditions make it very much clear and uh, there will be a justification to be there. So now the two angle is preserved from the two angles. How? Let us see. One angle is that globalization is means of increasing the wealth of nations. Okay. That is a true fact. It is increasing the wealth of the nations. But the simultaneously, it will exploit also the nation's labor and promoting the international trade. Yes, it is promoted the international trade, no doubt in Egypt. And however, the globalization is a direct cause for the widening the economic gap between the developing countries and developed countries. So, a rich become a more rich and a poor become not more poor, but at least he will be remain as a poor because Thank you.